Do you want to take your Android development or just mobile development in general up to the next level with notifications, native share feature, uh, accessing the camera, and much, much more? All right, everyone, in uh, this video, like you may have guessed from the introduction there, we're going to take a look at how we can take our Android development and go from this kind of a basic level and up our game to be able to use the native share button to other social media platforms. You know, the little uh, thing in a game that maybe you hit a button or uh, if you share a quiz, say, in a browser, you share your results. I might take a screenshot and you can share it to social media somewhere. Or uh, maybe in your game, you want to allow the user to use their camera on their phone, take a picture, grab that image, and then use that to apply a texture to something. Maybe you want to do something like that. Well, we're going to take a look at how we can uh, allow this kind of, these kind of things to happen. And to put you on that path, all I have here is just an empty project I created. And all you need to do, of, aside from setting yourself up to actually export for Android, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to come over to this library here, the native lib. And you can find this on, uh, sorry, you can find this on uh, GitHub. There should be a link down below. And all we're going to do is we're just going to hit this green code button and I'm going to go ahead and download a zip. Of course, uh, if you know how to do this another way, if you know how to do this in another way, you can certainly uh, clone the repository if you want to go about it that way. That works as well. But once you, once you have that folder, um, all you're going to do is just extract it. It's uh, nothing special. And what you want out of that is you want to grab the add-ons folder that is inside of it. And then back in, a, uh, back in our project, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to project, we're going to install the Android build template. Okay. That's gone through. Now I'm going to right click on my file system, just open in file manager. And I'm just going to paste that add-ons folder from the repo in here. And now I'm back here. It's been added in. Now what this has done is added a, or put an add-on into our project. So now we can go up to project, project settings, go to plugins, and you'll see the native lib appear here at the top. All we do is turn that on, just enable it. Hit close, and you'll see native lib now appears up at the top of your screen, right next to the asset lib. And at this point, we are we are ready to start using native libraries with our project. Now, if you do not have Python installed, if you're on Windows, you're going to need to go install uh, a version of Python. If it doesn't work with the latest version, then try using an older version. If you are using Mac OS, you should have a version of Python installed. Uh, it might be too old. It might not work. And if that's the case, head over to the website and download a newer version. If you're on Linux, I don't think you have any version of Python installed. I could be wrong. Um, maybe this depends on your distro as well. I don't know. But. Either case, if it doesn't work, you don't have it installed, go ahead, head to the site, and select a version of Python. Once you have that done, we can just select the native lib here. And if Python is not detected, like you see down here at the bottom right corner, for me, it shows Python 3.10.4. So for me, it detected it. If it does not detect it for you, just hit this select Python button in the top right and navigate to your Python directory. All right, once you have your Python version selected, you hit the packages button down here in the bottom right, bottom right and you'll see that it says, uh, or you may have noticed um, a small change here. You may have, you may have not. 
Uh, but a difference here is I found out that this actually doesn't work on 3.5. So at the moment, if you would like to create, so at this moment, if you want to create uh, using some of these native plugins at the current time, um, you're going to have to download uh, 3.4 version of the engine. Uh, for some reason, whatever changed from 3.4 to 3.5 has broken this plugin. And there's a couple of small plugins where uh, where 3.5 has broken it. And this apparently is one of them. So for the time being, uh, you'll have to install 3.4.x uh, to use this one. Yeah. Uh, if you wonder why I didn't mention it in the beginning, it's because I didn't know that in the beginning. Uh, and I've actually sat here for a bit trying to figure out why the plugin wasn't working. And I just reinstalled 3.4 and it just worked. So there's some kind of issue going on there. All right. So now that you have this uh, set up, you've installed the native lib library from the, from the GitHub page. Um, uh, additionally, additionally, you can actually find it inside of the asset lib as well, uh, asset lib as well right here or called native lib. And with Python installed again, if it's not, Detected automatically down here. Just hit the select Python button, top here, and locate it. And if this does not autofill for you, you can go ahead and you can hit the native lib and or the packages button down here. Now for something um, such as notifications, we can take a look at real quick. Uh, it's a very easy to use and install these plugins for us to use, or these modules rather, because this is going with native uh, applications, native native code for Android. And these aren't the only ones that you have access to. There are some on GitHub as well. You just have to locate them. So for example, let's say we wanted to create this for Android. I'm going to turn on the Android filter here. So I only see things that are, uh, that work with Android. And I'm going to go ahead and search local, uh, local slash push notifications. Okay, there it is. And all we have to do is hit the install button. And we can see dependent depends on, of course, uh, the engine and Android. So there we go. It's perfectly fine. We can now begin using that. Now, there are other situations such as, I believe, add Bob or app loving. There we go. Um, put that in. And you can see there's a lot of uh, things <laughs> that you can do here. But uh, some of these you might install and might ask you for some information, such as uh, a code for your app loving uh, that you can go ahead and put in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit install. We'll see if it pops up here. There we go. So you, you'll see something like this. In this case, it wants your SDK key. And if you use app loving in that, you probably know what it is they're asking for. I'm going to go ahead and hit uninstall for that. But we can go ahead, create a new scene, save it. Um, we'll say notification. I'll add a script to it. Now, if you ever don't know what any of these do, um, go up into your native lib, check only get the things that are installed. In my case, we're only going to see local slash push notifications. And we can go ahead and we can hit the link button here on the right hand side and that'll open up the repository for us. Uh, now you can't see this uh, on the screen right now, but if you opened up the repo from the link below, you'll know exactly what it is because that's what we're linking to. And it's pretty much just going to go through, or at least all of these should uh, go through. They'll show you the commands that you can call, uh, any signals that uh, that you have, as well as normally they tell you how to use it, how to use the application as well. So if I just this and I'll go ahead and pop this up. There we go. So you can see here, we just have the repository, the usage, the API. And then we take a look at, we can see we got a function called show daily. 
And that takes in arguments of message, title, hour, minute, and tag. Whatever that is. We don't know if we don't know what that is. We can take a look here. We can see times in 24 hour format, hour and minute. So that means you're going to go 12 hour, 13 hour, 14 hour, 15, etc. You can override the notification with a new time or cancel it with a tag and register a new one. So you see, there you go. You can see tag is like an identifier. Uh, we can see cancel. There we go. Like I said, tag is an identifier. You can cancel a daily notification with that. Cancel all of them, initialize, and we see your device token, deep link, and all this information. And here you go, we can see use push notification for iOS. So if you're using an app, making this for an Apple device, uh, you have some instructions down here. All right, so as an example of using this, all right, so as an example of using this uh, to show you what it's like or give you an example. Now, if we were to take a look at our script, so if I just type that and we come back into our code here, uh, cancel out that, if we open up the scripts, uh, we can see local notification is the name of it here. So inside of our control, I put in, there we go. There we go. So if we come in, this is what we're, you're essentially going to do. So we're going to check if our engine has the singleton local notification. And it should tell you on the uh, GitHub page uh, the name of the singleton that you're looking for. Um, and if it doesn't and you don't find it, oh, I'm going to resave that. Um, then go inside of the Android folder here inside of your project, go into plugins, open in file manager, and you're going to see a GDAP file and an AAR file. And you'll see, uh, in this case, they're named local notification, all one word, capital L, capital N, just like you see here. And that is the name of your singleton. So if it doesn't show you on the GitHub page, this is where... Uh, another location that you can find it inside your files. So we're going to check if we have this plugin, basically. Uh, if so, we're going to assign this singleton to our variable here so we don't have to write all this out all the time. And in this case, we'll just assign it to the variable ln for local notification. And now we can call things like show as a notification. And again, we have our uh, message our title, and our other information that is specifically related to that show command. So that's message, title, interval, and then tag. And then there is another argument there for repeating interval. All right. So if you're confused by that, I'm sorry. Message, title, and our first interval here is the delay in seconds. So when we call this show function, we're going to wait one second and then the notification will pop up. And that's basically all that first uh, number means. And then our second number here is uh, the tag that I mentioned earlier. So our, our identifier. So this is all we would have to do to create a notification that will pop up. Now, if we were to run this, obviously, this is not going to work on the computer. And if we take a look at the debugger, we're actually going to see local notification plugin not found. And that takes us, if you click on that, it's going to take you into the script. But that's, it's not found purely because we're not on mobile. If we were to run this on a mobile device, your notification would pop up. 